second time this season, Mark Winterbottom will start from position one in the V8 Supercars, collects another $5,000 from Armorall. Ford Performance Racing now have positions one and two for the first race of the Sky City Triple Crown. Talking about Ford, they are certainly the hot issue at the moment. We're going to talk right now about this burning issue of the company's change of policy in terms of funding support in V8 Supercars Racing. Basically, it boils down to this. FPR and SBR are now the only two teams with direct cash support from the Blue Oval. It means that Brightech Motorsport, Dick Johnson Racing and Team Vodafone Triple Eight effectively miss out. To talk about that, Neil Cropton joins me. So does Roland Dane, the team principal at Triple Eight and also one of the icons of the Blue Oval, Dick Johnson. We'll have a chat to Dick in just a second. But Roland, I want to start with you first up. We know what's happened now, but everyone wants to know, why did it happen to your team? Uh, I think it came down to a bit of colour discrimination at the end of the day. Um, and uh, uh, Ford, as they're entitled to do, decided that they needed to have predominantly blue cars, I believe, um, representing them as their official brand carriers. And uh, we, of course, got a, um, a naming rights sponsor uh, that's uh, got a particularly fetching uh, shade of fluoro. And um, so we've, uh, I think we've fallen foul, to be honest, of... Uh, of uh, circumstances in terms of uh, of differing branding um, differing branding ideas from uh, from competing sponsors if you like on the car it's amazing to think dick johnson what does this mean for you and djr well it obviously means that we've really got to uh, sit down now uh, in amongst ourselves and and see what options we do have available to us to be able to uh, fill the gap that's that's left there because uh, it was a significant part of our budget but uh, going forward, as I said, we'll just sit down and, and see what we can do. And then, uh, uh, like everyone else, we'll make a business decision on uh, which direction we take. Roland, I was in your workshop a couple of weeks ago for an episode of V8 Extra. And one of the things that was going on there was this enormous project to build the FG Ford. And you've been an intrinsic part of that entire process. So that makes this decision all the more unusual. <laughs> Unusual, yeah. I mean, it makes it a little bit more difficult for us to to absorb, really, as a as a company. Um, my uh, technical director, who's been with Triple H, you know, for for nine years, uh, both here and and in the UK, uh, Ludo Lacroix, who has put an awful lot of personal effort into the design and development of the FG, particularly on the styling and the um, and the aero. Uh, kit for the car. Um, he's um, taking off tomorrow to sail his new boat back from Bali to Darwin, so I hope he gets here. But um, but I know that he's particularly, he's gone off uh, in a bit of a huff uh, because he's uh, particularly, I, sp I think, um, personally affronted by the fact that he's put in so much personal effort into it. Um, so, yeah, it, it makes it strange, but hey, you know, it's their money at the end of the day and they're entitled to do what they want with it. And sometimes there can be a bit of emotion in this stuff. Dick, Roland made reference before to the colour implications of this decision. Have you also had that one thrown at you, that colour played a role in the decision at Jim Beam Racing? Well, not directly, but that's uh, what we believe is, is one of the reasons for it. But, um, you know, I see that uh, in one respect, I suppose, um, they still make red cars, I know that, so uh, that to me uh, sounds a bit ambiguous. Roland, if, uh, if red is the issue for you, then there's quite a few people out there watching this thinking, well, why wouldn't you just go red next year? As in, would you switch sides and go to hold it? Oh, I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, we've always got the opportunity to, to change if we wanted to. It's, as Dick alluded to there, it's a business decision, whatever direction we go into, and uh, hey, yeah, maybe we'll run one of each. Dick, what about you? You've seen the amazing highs and the lows of this sport. Where does this one rank for you, this decision, and, and the shock that you felt when you found out about it? Well, look, you know, as you know, mate, we've had a lot of those over the, the period of years that I've been involved, but certainly um, this was totally unexpected. Some of the others come uh, unexpected, but certainly uh, not like this. So uh, we, we'll just regroup and uh, sit down and, and see what our options are because um, you know, I'm a great believer in turning negatives into positives and, and uh, when one door closes, another one opens, and let's hope it's a good one. Roland, on that subject, and if we talk about glass half full and not half empty, is this an opportunity now for the industry to reassess where it's at with the number of manufacturers that are playing in the space and others that might be able to, and indeed a technical agenda going forward? Oh, totally. I mean, it, as Dick's absolutely right. Whenever whenever something as, um, as uh, yeah, 
negative as this comes out of the blue to you, as it were, um, then you should always uh, be uh, saying, okay, well, what can we make out of this? And I think that's not only from a team point of view, but it's also from a category point of view. We've got to understand that things are changing. And the, these, two, these two companies that we're involved with here, Holden and Ford, have both had their fair share of challenges in the last year or two. And uh, we need to learn to adapt our sport to, to really to suit what um, our sponsors and, and manufacturers may want in the future. How did you keep your focus coming into this weekend, given what's happened over the last couple of days? Because you've now got both your drivers inside the top five, even though I know that you think it could have been higher. Oh, no, we, uh, you know, we, we actually were very disappointed just now with, uh, with ourselves because Jamie did a great job. But we just uh, we, we should have been on pole easily with Jamie and Craig uh, used his tyres too early. But uh, look, we're very competitive here. The guys don't need uh, me to, to, uh, to lift in these circumstances. They're out there and they're, they're looking forward to beating the Volvo. I mean, sorry, the forwards <laughs> on, the, on the track. It's tight at the top end of town, isn't it, at the moment? I mean, we haven't seen anybody break clear in this championship. Everybody's stumbled at some point at least once. It's amazing to consider that Jamie didn't even get a point on the board in New Zealand after the qualifying incident, and he's well and truly in the points game. And it appears to me as though Craig has lifted his game. Just in the last couple of rounds, something's happened in the chemistry inside your outfit, and he's well and truly a factor now as well. Yeah, well, Craig had a, um, a new engineer at the beginning of the year. Took takes a little bit of time to gel, but um, uh, I think um, Craig, is uh, he's always there or thereabouts, and anyone who discounts Craig in a racing situation is silly because uh, he'll always produce the goods at some point and you've seen him at the the big moments at Bathurst and everything he's uh, he's there so um, and look Jamie's just done a fantastic job the last two years and he's continuing to uh, to do that and despite the setbacks or he's uh, yep okay that's over let's get on and keep winning races yeah. and Dick before we let you go and uh, uh, concentrate on race one asked uh, Roland the same question so we've got to afford it to you would you ever would you consider a switch of sides given what's happened well, look, when you consider the amount of work that's gone into the development of the new FG, um, I suppose it would be very disappointing to go anywhere else. But, but after all, they're only sheet panels, so uh, we can pull one set of sheet panels off and bolt another set on so, uh, uh, and, and still maintain the, uh, the engineering that's uh, currently in the cars at this point in time. So, you know, anything's, anything's possible. As I said, you know, we just really got to see uh, what our options are and, and uh, make a business decision. All right, mate. Well, these are interesting times. We appreciate your thoughts, Dick, and we appreciate yours and your time as well, Roland. Thank you very much. Good luck in race one. Thank you. Thanks, so there it is. That's the biggest issue facing uh, the V8 supercars at the moment. We're going to take a break here from Hidden Valley. The Australian Formula Ford Championship is coming up.